POC Network here, and we got a new product to talk about today, and uh, you're probably going to love it. If you're a big fan of those digital frames growing up over the last, say, 17 years, uh, they've been pretty common, about 15 to 17 years. When they first started making their entrance onto the market, they, they started off as bulky little frames where you can display some of your favorite vacation photographs and other things, whatever you want to display on them. They started off as you just load them on to a USB drive or something and stick them on there and then they just kind of slowly turn the array around and, and make, their, you know, make their way through the collection of all the pictures on there. Then it started growing and saying, okay, or they started adding features like, let's add USB ports and SD cards and all this other stuff. Great, but then became, then came, then came <laughs> the age of smart. Smartphones, smart house, smart frames, smart everything, smart, smart, smart. Everything needs an app, everything needs a purpose. Because just simply putting your pictures on there isn't enough. So, fast forward to 2017. Here we are, we have digital photo frames all over the place where you can display your stuff um, via USB drive, SD cards, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can also stream to them via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and control them via apps. It's great. But they're still just photo frames. So now let's take a step back and let's look back at a movie called Antitrust. That was late 90s, I think it was, late 90s. Um, that was a fantastic movie. It kind of had a lot of uh, theoretical designs of things to come, what the future would look like. Um, one of the characters, was, it was kind of based on uh, pretty much Microsoft and Bill Gates. And the main character was at Bill Gates' house, but it was somebody else's name, different company and whatnot. And as they're walking through the house, there are giant paintings on the wall, or what looked like paintings, but when somebody walked into the room, they all changed. They were actually digital frames that reacted to the users that come into the room. Now, we don't exactly have that just yet, 100% at least, but I'm sure they're working on it. But what we do have actually is the most important part, the frame. We actually have digital canvas frames now, not just photo frames. And it's thanks to companies like Mural. And we're going to take a look at one right now. So what you're looking at right here, right now, is Mural's digital canvas. It literally is a photo frame, a digital frame, blown up to the size of a 27-inch print. And what's inside is an IPS 1080p monitor stuck inside of a shell of a frame. And it looks fantastic. So what we've done is we placed it into our front lobby here. We cleared everything away so you can get a nice good shot of this. And uh, everybody's been coming in and out of the building, just playing with it, loving it. This thing is fantastic. You have pre uh, a preloaded library of all sorts of images, uh, some of the most fantastic you know, works of art from, from artists like Van Gogh and, and Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and, and whatever else floats your boat, it's in there. Picasso, you name it. They have so many different collections to choose from that they call playlists or playlists that you would call collections, that they call collections to choose from, but on top of that, obviously, you can also upload your own artwork. Now, this, for example, we've obtained this from just going to Google Images. We looked up 1080p resolution comic artist uh, uh, renditions of various different Marvel and DC and other forms of, uh, you know, fan art, as well as professional art. Uh, we were uh, going to, for this video, get a lot more, but we couldn't quite uh, get the permission from certain artists. But uh, uh, we will be displaying certain things on here from world-renowned artists like Daryl Skelton, who's done a lot of work with Marvel, DC, and so forth. But the focus, the main focus, is what, what suits your interests. And you can upload whatever you want. So, uh, the, the frame itself, when you hang it on the wall, it comes with the various different things. It comes with a cord, so you got to know where to run the cord and hide it. Uh, if you have a recessed outlet in the wall, or, you know, or ceiling or wherever you're placing this, uh, then it can hide away pretty easily. It is kind of bulky, so it's about yay big. Uh, the cable, though, is uh, a good, I'd say, five feet. Uh, so it'll get you to where you need to go pretty easily. Maybe even six feet you can probably get out of that. And the whole thing can be controlled in three different ways. Once you get it turned on, it takes just a few seconds, about maybe five seconds for it to turn on completely and get to its first image. 
and you have the ability to control it via an app. Miro has their own Canvas app that you can load on an iPhone or Android, which can control what images on here, what playlists are loaded on there, and you can even swap it around and everything else, control the backlight uh, and a few other options. You can also control this from the internet. So you can, uh, well, internet, and so that's what the app's for as well. It's all Wi-Fi based, but you can also control it from any browser, from any computer. So if you have a Mac or Windows PC or anything, or a laptop, you can control it using that, or a tablet, and you just go to mural.com. That's M-E-U-R-A-L.com. And uh, the, it'll, there'll be a link to log in at the top right called My Mural. It's my.mural. And when you click on that, log in, you, you know, at this point, you've already registered with it, um, registered uh, or associated this to a registered account on Mural, which is all included in the small little instruction manual that's really simple to read that it comes with. Then it can be linked to that. You can you can control everything from the website and additional options such as scheduling the uh, the sleep time so it's not always on. So like like for example in in our setup here, I think we've got twelve midnight to seven a.m. So it shuts off, right? Uh, everybody's usually here gone by by six or seven, but still, uh, it works. It's great, and uh, and it doesn't just stop there. There's many more features to choose from. Now your third option to choose from is swiping it. So if you're walking by, people are walking by, and this is what everybody's been doing as they come into the building. They're like, oh, I don't like this picture. You just walk by it and swipe it and change to a different picture. And ta-da, there you go. Somebody else can walk by and go, no, I want the original one. You don't have to touch it. You just wave your hand in front of it, and that's all it takes. And if you want to change to a different, uh, uh, a different collection or playlist, you can say, okay, I want Faces, which contains a bunch of uh, uh, famous artwork. Now, you have the Mona Lisa. So just like that, you know, it, it doesn't take much effort whatsoever to change the images, and there's two sensors on this thing, depending on if you're hanging it landscape or horizontal. So if it's hanging the other way, you could use this sensor that's right here to also change it. Actually, what I brought up was uh, something we'll talk about in a second. <laughs> But um, I think the sensor works when it's, uh, there we go. So usually um, when it's hung the other way, it's going to respond better from this sensor. But uh, another cool, simple, or a good option that you actually just saw popping up on the screen right there is if you lift your hand up like that, it gives you a nice little breakdown of history of what the image is that you're looking at. So at this point, it's telling you that you're looking at an artist uh, or an image by an artist uh, or painting by the artist, Leonardo da Vinci. This is the Mona Lisa, 1503 to 1506 at the Louvre, Paris, France, oil on panel collection. And it gives you a history. It, can, it gives you a nice good text here that talks about what it is, where it came from, you know, a little bit of a back, uh, background story of that photo. So if you were to change or painting, uh, okay, now we're going to bring that up, and this is Munch, this is the Scream, and uh, this one doesn't really have much to it, it's just as 1910, Munch Museum, uh, Oslo, uh, Norway, Tempera on panel, and uh, no background story on that one. Usually you'll have a background, but it, it all depends on whatever they preloaded on there, and you can preload your own. So here's Vincent van Gogh, and it uh, gives you a, a good breakdown, uh, 1889 Museum of Modern Art in New York City, uh, this is a portrait of the postman, Joseph Rulin. So... Now let's go back to putting your own art up there, or on here. Uh, we're going to uh, bring it back to the playlists. And we'll go this way, bring back our favorite comic artists. It's really not our favorite comic artists, we just kind of found what we enjoyed online. And if we wanted to add to this, when you upload these, you, want, you can do this from your cell phone, from the app. Uh, you can upload via the images that are on your phone one at a time, or you can do it from the browser, which is recommended because you can batch upload as many uh, images at the same time as you want. And from there, you can add the additional information that'll pop up, pop up down here. So right here, we don't have that. It just says Nervous Hulk. That's whoever created this image, uh, this, this uh, fan art. Uh, they called it Nervous Hulk. And uh, we didn't add any information ourselves. So there's no background or anything because we don't really know anything about this artist or the piece. It's just fan art, to our knowledge, used for a demonstration. And the same thing applies to everything else that we have on here. Uh, I don't think we loaded anything. Yeah, it's just the name of the file. So, but you can do that from the website. You can uh, add in there and just do a whole bio of the Im of the image. I think it's uh, the I think the the field that you fill out is called content, right? Yeah, content is what you want to fill out, and that adds the content to that image so that you have something to look at. 
But that's it. It's really simple. You can get even more uh, information out of the, some of the, or, or more options out of the frame through motion by going down instead of up or left and right. Left and right controls the pictures. Up will give you the, the, the content for that image. Up again gives you the playlists. Right and left allows you to select for the playlist and then up selects that playlist. But down, starting from the very beginning, gives you a menu where you got, uh, you can go back and just cancel out. You got sleep, so you can make the frame just go to sleep. Now it's gone. See how responsive that is. Looks like you guys got some uh, fingerprints going there. So we're going to turn it back on just by waving your hand any which way you want in front of it. And you also have Wi-Fi, so you can restart the Wi-Fi. Let me go back. Restart, uh, start local network, which it will broadcast its own network before you get it on your Wi-Fi. That way you can connect to it using the app, because that's the start. You have to have an Android or an iPhone to connect to it using your app so that you can access it uh, via its own Wi-Fi. Then the app will respond to that, and then you've set up all the features, such as connecting it to your Wi-Fi at your business or home or wherever else that you're displaying this. So we're gonna come actually go back into that. We got reload, which pretty much just res you know, resets the whole frame. And then you have setup, and that's it. And uh, we'll get rid of that. So it's real simple. Right now we actually have it. It should look to you pretty nice uh, on screen in this video, but it's actually only at about 15 to 20% backlight, which means this thing can go a lot brighter than this, yet it still looks fantastic at the low backlight that it's set to. And the reason why we did this is we wanted something natural. The more light that's coming from the image, the more unnatural it's going to look in terms of it, you know, somebody walking by thinking, is that a canvas or is that, you know, a digital frame of sorts? And because of that, uh, we've kept it at 15 to 20% because we felt that this view, that gives the more natural look because paintings don't exactly glow, but they can. And that's what the 15 to 20% really accomplishes on some of those brighter colors like whites and whatnot. They'll glow like a natural painting would do. And if you want it to be more of a digital, you know, an obvious digital frame, then you can just crank up the brightness all you want. We do recommend staying away from any heavy usages of white. So like if you have a whole white background with something in the middle, it's probably going to be pretty obvious that it's a frame or a digital frame and not an actual static image or poster or, or painting or anything else. Um, and, but again, unless that's what you're looking for. So that's it. This is Mural's digital canvas. A digital frame the size of a small painting or mid-sized painting. It's a 27-inch IPS 1080p screen, and it looks fantastic. It can be controlled by hand. It works flawlessly. It can be controlled by the app. Works flawlessly. And it can be controlled even better from the website, where you can access all the deeper settings and really have a lot of fun with it, including easier uh, control of all the, the various different uh, collections or playlists and all the images you've uploaded where on the app it's you're not really going to have much to choose from so again there you have it this is the mural digital canvas thank you for watching and go check out plcnetwork.net where we've already published a very lengthy review about it that uh really breaks it down to you know what we like about it what we don't like but mostly like because i believe it got a pretty high score i think it was like eight or nine out of ten i mean it's a fantastic frame uh, the price, the MSRP is about $5.95, so it isn't too affordable just yet, uh, but it is a pretty nice uh, display piece to have, especially if you can't figure out what you want to put on the wall between a multitude of selection of, of images. Now you don't have to worry about that because you just throw this bad boy up and you're done. So, again, pocnetwork.net. Go see what we had to say about it with additional images and information, walkthrough and how to install it, and so forth. And as always, we thank you for watching. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.